In talking about risk, and as we move to the idea of beta, and we mentioned standard deviation, we've talked a little bit about correlations, I thought it might be worthwhile to, instead of just talk about hypothetical examples, to use some real numbers. So what I did is went on to Yahoo Finance and looked at historical stock returns on a monthly basis for several large companies that you guys are probably familiar with. So we've got Google, Caterpillar, Walmart, Pepsi, Ford, Exxon, McDonald's, Apple, and then we have the S&P 500. And the S&P 500 is what we call a market index. It tries to measure how the overall market is doing by looking at 500 stocks together in one large portfolio. And in this table, what I've done is collect the correlations and also some standard deviations for these stocks over a five-year time period ending in August 2009. So for example, if we look here, we can see Google and Caterpillar have a correlation of 0.14, low positive correlation. Google and Walmart, 0.09. Uh, down here, Google and Apple. Not surprisingly, two technology stocks have the higher correlation on that little list here that we're looking at for companies. Google and Apple are both very highly correlated. When investors are interested in technology stocks, both of those tend to do well. When investors don't like technology stocks, they tend to be a little bit higher risk. Both of those stocks do poorly. Now, if we look at these correlations, you can notice almost all of the correlations are low positive values. We've got a few that approach the 0.5 area maybe a little past 0.5, Caterpillar and Ford. Again, two companies that are fairly similar will have higher correlations. And we've got some 0 0.48, 0 0.49 down here. But very few numbers get above 0.5 or get much above 0.5. And we also see that very few numbers are negative. There are actually only two negative correlations on here. Walmart and Exxon, and then Walmart and Apple have slight negative correlations. This is common. We tend to see most stocks have positive correlations because they tend to be impacted by the same general economic factors. The stocks tend to have low positive correlations instead of high because each company is affected by firm specific factors. So the firm specific factors lower the correlations the general economic factors increase them a little bit. Most correlations are going to have positive values. Now, if I do this over the next five years, these numbers are going to change. My guess is Walmart and Exxon and Walmart and Apple will not have negative correlations over the next five years. Probably won't be very high, but they'll probably be weak positive because that's the tendency for most pairs of companies. If we look at standard deviations and we look at Google, you can see that's one of the higher ones on this list. Ford very high over the last five years as the entire auto industry came close to bankruptcy. We lost Chrysler and General Motors to bankruptcy. Ford survived, but their stock price went down as low as $2 before rebounding up into the $6 to $8 price range. And Apple is another high one along the lines of Google, which tend to be more volatile. Technology companies often are more volatile. Caterpillar heavy industry tends to be more volatile, driven upward greatly when the economy is strong and can really get hurt when the economy is weak. Some of these other stocks like Walmart and Pepsi, more consumer staples. Exxon, which is oil, no matter if the economy is strong or weak, still need some oil out there and McDonald's which again is a consumer staple product tend to have lower standard deviations less risk because they're not as sensitive to the overall economy we can also look at how highly correlated they are to the overall market to that S&P 500 we see Caterpillar is one of the higher numbers the 0.79 but you notice all these numbers tend to be up around the 0.5 area the one that's a little bit lower is Walmart, but most of the other numbers have, ten, have moderate 
correlations around 0.5 to the overall market. We'll typically see correlations to the overall market be a little bit higher than correlations to other individual stocks because there's less firm specific issues tied into the market. We're going to use these examples coming up to calculate the beta and the required return for a couple different companies.